Uh, it's a pleasure for me to um, um, introduce you tonight to uh, a special uh, premiere uh, here, of course, the first time it's screened here in Saasve, but <laughs> also uh, uh, in general, the film uh, of the Yes Men, uh, their third film, The Yes Men Are Revolting, uh, only uh, launched in the United States uh, two weeks ago, will come to Europe at some point. Um, so it's uh, really brand new. I, I got the permission to screen it uh, from both uh, um, men, uh, both yes men. Um, so um, yeah, I was very very glad uh, to um, uh, you know to get that permission and to uh, see it. I have to say I have not seen the film myself. Uh, so um, I got it a couple of days ago, um, and uh, so I'm also looking forward uh, to it. Um, I know the film uh, is somewhat different from uh, the first and the second. The third, the first was. Uh, uh, in, from 2003 and kind of wrapped up their work from the 90s. Uh, the, work, the film from 2009 um, did some somewhat similar, maybe they have a similar approach to, to me and my own books. I, 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 I produce books, they produce films, and in these films they look back at all the work uh, they've been uh, doing. So the work they're doing is not necessarily cinematic in nature. Uh, so they use the film, especially this documentary uh, feature film format, uh, to um, you know to compile their work, uh, to present it, and also to reflect on it uh, themselves. And uh, from what I read uh, so far uh, about this film, uh, in in this film in particular, they look back uh, at uh, let's say 20 years of uh, of Yes Man. And, uh, you know, to put it in our common uh, vocabulary, to look at um, the way uh, in which uh, this tactical media approach that uh, we, the Yes Man, me, and so many others of my generation, uh, have been involved in since the early mid-19s, um, uh, since uh, basically the fall of the uh, Berlin Wall, the rise of uh, digital media, the arrival of uh, computers and uh, uh, the internet uh, in particular. So, um, so their approach um, is really uh, tied to that uh, base. Uh, they are um, the yes men. If I may introduce them, uh, they uh, they have been um, pranksters first and foremost. So this is their very nature. Uh, so, the, yeah, you wouldn't necessarily call them media activists, that's how uh, maybe we uh, as um, um, insiders look at them. Uh, but, you know, they, they primarily intervene from a, a kind of situationist or, um, you know, communication guerrilla perspective uh, and, and attitude to, uh, uh, towards life. This is their, uh, this is their method. Uh, this is also, this has become... Uh, you know, their brand uh, in a way. And um, in this film, they're going to just show, uh, you know, a lot of uh, new examples and contexts uh, in, in which they have um, uh, intervened. Um, and um, after the film, I would uh, like to uh, say a little bit more about uh, their approach, uh, about uh, where tactical media uh, is uh, at this very moment, and what it means when uh, you know when we start to reflect on it 20, 20 years after uh, its birth, where media activist uh, tactics uh, are at uh, at the moment, and um, you know if we should say goodbye uh, to some of the tactics uh, of the 90s, yes or no. Uh, you know, how we should respond uh, to, uh, let's say, everything that happened since the Arab Spring and Occupy and uh, all the uh, other social movements and uh, uh, global, uh, uh, you know, revolts that uh, have happened uh, over the last uh, five uh, or so years, right, since uh, the global financial uh, crisis. So is there uh, a, um, an, an opportunity or a time where we should... Uh, 
and also can uh, uh, reassess our tactics and uh, if so, what should be the new ones? Uh, is there something we can take from, uh, from the past uh, and how do we uh, look at um, you know, the interventions in the mainstream? Because this is, uh, the, has been the tactic of the yes man since the very beginning, right? So these are um, uh, yeah, prankster interventions in the mainstream and um, uh, how do we look uh, at, uh, at that uh, from uh, today's perspective? Okay, now without further ado, well, let's just look at the film and then uh, I'll uh, give my uh, inter interpretation and update and then we can uh, discuss uh, these matters. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, this is the end of the film. No, they're, they're describing the, what happened with the lawsuit in the audio. Thanks. Oh, yeah, that's just, it was about to head to trial. The Chamber decided to drop it. Oh. The Chamber of Commerce is withdrawing their lawsuit against us. If this lawsuit had gone to trial, we would have had the right to do our own investigation. We would have been able to look into the Chamber's finances. <laughs> And we would have been able to learn how they managed to be the most heavily funded lobbying organization in the world to support corporate rule without limits. And uh, we finally do have business cards. Yes, so we finally have some business cards. <laughs> um, incidentally, the Chamber is offering a free lunch today. They're having a conference on how big business could impact the Thank measure of government. And it's listed on their, <laughs> on their website that you have the right to a free lunch here to just go and sign. But whatever he's told you, if these guys for lunch, it's not for me. Did they say so on the website? Do you have a business card? I do. I have a business card. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it, it, it feels like um, kind of a, a wrap-up and um, a, a big, um, you know, motivation to, uh, to somehow continue. The last action, obviously, was a, you know, a very, very good one, again, um, in the old style uh, of uh, the Yes Men, uh, one which, uh, which worked uh, very, very, uh, very well. In my view. Okay. Um, yeah, it it's, it looks back, uh, it, and it's kind of melancholic uh, in a way. It uh, it speaks about things that work and do not work. Um, it, it speaks about the the position of the of the hoax and the, the media intervention in in the context of uh, the larger social movements. And I think that's a that's a good. Uh, that's a good uh, topic uh, because um, this is really uh, what uh, a lot of the media activists um, of my generation, of the Yes Man's generation, uh, have been, uh, of course, asking the, themselves. Um, and <clears throat> um, so, protests and um, um, uh, press releases, media attention, demonstrations, uh, occupations. Um, They've all been kind of uh, in the old school uh, idea, been uh, organized uh, to somehow um, uh, influence public uh, opinion and then through that somehow uh, um, uh, policy makers, uh, decision makers and uh, eventually <coughs> put pressure uh, on uh, legislation and, and corporations uh, to change uh, policies and to change uh, you know society at large eventually and um, um, yeah it's it's really been a question whether uh, you know the use of tactics um, have uh, have worked um, the 
what the film uh, obviously that, you know does not uh, address is of course the major uh, changes that we've seen in our our field. So the yes men uh, have continued uh, to uh, use their uh, prankster uh, tactics, but um, of course, what is the big big uh, difference between uh, let's say now and ten years ago or even twenty years ago? is of course the rise of internet and then of, of social media in particular. And um, yeah, it's somehow a pity that uh, you know, this is not uh, addressed because uh, it, it's particularly the, 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 the movements of, uh, let's say, the last four or five years, uh, which all have a, a direct or indirect relationship um, with, um, with these uh, uh, social media. Uh, the uh, uprising in Tunisia, of course, in particular, and then uh, the, uh, the uprising uh, in, in Egypt uh, as well, uh, <clears throat> in, in direct ways. But, uh, but then, uh, just to remember the most recent one uh, in Hong Kong, um, yeah, there's so many uh, examples of, uh, of, of today's movements uh, that, uh, yeah, not only uh, had a representation out there, but you know where where the question uh, really is, uh, you know, has the movement itself, uh, you know, constituted there, uh, and has the movement through social media really been mobilized? And um, so the social media are not only used uh, to spread the uh, the message in terms of. Um, you know, influencing public opinion, but it, it, it obviously has been used for mobilizations. And then the question really amongst uh, activists these days is the question, you know, how much of the movement itself uh, should, be, uh, should be allocated inside uh, these uh, social media themselves, which means that the social media are becoming more than just a tool to influence uh, 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 public opinion at large, it's more than, uh, you know, a, a medium to uh, do the mobilization, but it becomes a primary tool for organization itself, right? And this is really uh, the, no, maybe not step forward, but this is kind of where we are at, at the very moment, where the organization of, of the social movement themselves uh, is, is happening to a large extent uh, you know, in, in, in chats, in, in, in Facebook groups, uh, uh, on, uh, on Twitter, uh, in forums, and so on and so on, right? Okay, there is a variety of, uh, of platforms, yeah, that we don't have to speak about uh, social media in a narrow sense, namely uh, only those uh, limited uh, number of, uh, of, let's say, American corporation, which, uh, which, uh, um, are dominating this field. Of course, we can have a, a larger uh, d um, a definition uh, about that. But this is really uh, where uh, the, the, the discussion is at. And uh, this uh, was obviously already uh, the case during Occupy and uh, has only, um, let's say, uh, gone more intense uh, since, um, uh, since then. Also, because more and more young people are um, <clears throat> on social media, uh, you know, 24/7, and this is their environment, this is their uh, <clears throat> way of uh, of living and um, of uh, speaking to uh, their their friends and peers and uh, students, coast, fr um, you know, colleagues, whoever. Uh, so um, yeah, this this is kind of. Uh, so where the, the, the question of the organization of the social movements, uh, you know, has become almost uh, identical uh, uh, to the social media question. And I think that question just needs to be uh, addressed. Uh, this film, uh, yeah, as I already expected, uh, is not uh, going into, into these issues. And uh, kind of, um, yeah, almost nostalgically uh, looks back um, uh, at this, uh, yeah, what to, uh, what we would call, you know, this this era of uh, tactical media, in which uh, you know very very specifically uh, designed, focused uh, interventions, temporary um, interventions are happening uh, in the mainstream uh, media themselves, right? And this is the 
This is the, the tech, this is the, the, uh, the definition of uh, tactical media, and I would like to um, speak a little bit of, uh, about that. Um, wait, I'll bring it up here, and uh, well, we can have a look at it. Yeah. All right. So, um, uh, so here is the um, the definition, as you can find it on Wikipedia. Uh, tactical media, uh, so now almost 20 years uh, old, uh, probably as a term, uh, you know, it, uh, it, it, it was um, designed uh, to um, overcome uh, the, the problems that were attached with uh, a term like alternative media, um, uh, because alternative media were um, at least uh, in, the, in, the, in the late 80s and early 90s seen as too much uh, associated with a separate, um, not underground, but with a separate subculture, with uh, as if the protest was happening somehow, you know, in a, in its own uh, realm, in its own separate um, environment. Uh, so uh, at the time we did, we uh, in, came up with this uh, idea of uh, tactical media. Uh, initially in '93, uh, we in Amsterdam called it uh, tactical television. So we were very much focused on on video at the time. But uh, then uh, we enlarged it, and of course uh, because of the rise of internet, but also because of the <clears throat> kind of multidisciplinary approach that uh, that we uh, developed. It meant that uh, you know we were including really all sorts of um, expression, and that of course included performance. Uh, it included um, <clears throat> uh, the pranks, and that's why, as you can see here in this uh, in this definition, uh, you know there's the definition that um, uh, I came up with this together with David Garcia, uh, and then in the next sentence there's yeah, the yes man. Uh, coming up, right? So the yes man, uh, they have uh, from the very very beginning uh, been um, associated um, explicitly with this term. Why? Uh, for the simple reason uh, that uh, the yes men were kind of embodying uh, this idea of the uh, temporary uh, tactical, uh, uh, you know, intervention that you could make. Uh, and it's also, of course, a very playful, almost Baudrillardian uh, kind of uh, uh, art of appearance and disappearance, right? You you show up somewhere, somewhere you do something, something you do something with the tools that you find appropriate in that context. You you uh, you know you perform the action, you do the intervention, then you disappear again and maybe show up somewhere else, right? Uh, it's in, uh, well, and then it, the, the website explains it uh, very n nicely. Uh, it goes back to, the, of course, to the situation is to the, 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 the um, let's say, the, um, the way um, Michel de Certeau, uh was <coughs> uh, defining it, the origins here. It's, um, <coughs> it explains uh, the, the 1984 essay uh, of uh, Michel de Sato because that is, indeed is, uh, you know, um, uh, the um, the source, um, you know, the primary source of this uh, of this idea of uh, of the tactics, but then applied, uh, let's say, to the the media field and the field of activism um, in um, in particular. Yeah. And then um, you, you get uh, the, the, the now classic uh, uh, examples, and here they are. Uh, so the yes men uh, are uh, there um, as well. Right? So um, the question now, of course, is what, what does this mean? What, uh, how can we, how, and when we look at this film also, uh, uh, can we say that uh, the tactics that uh, have been on display in this uh, third uh, major movie uh, the s man produced, are they somehow outdated? Are they not working anymore? Uh, they address this issue that, themselves in the film, and I think that's very honest, and that's very uh, you know, uh, appropriate uh, for activists to do, because activists can never be sure you know, that something 
they developed uh, over the, the course of uh, a few years or even decades, you know, will work again uh, in in um, in today's world. Why would it, right? Um, uh, so um, yeah, so th this is um, and what I wanted to show you here is uh, yeah there is a website uh, that is directly dealing with this question and it's kind of the the the, the website um, produced in Amsterdam by this, uh, the same group uh, who uh, did the three or four uh, next five minutes uh, festivals uh, back in 93 96 99 and um, uh, 203 uh, after that, we haven't uh, done any more uh, next five minutes uh, gatherings uh, on, a, on a large uh, scale. Um, the, the person who is running this website is Erik Kleitenberg, who used to work at the Bali uh, and now is, a, is an independent um, media uh, theorist and uh, activist. Uh, so, uh, the Tactical Media Files is, a, is on the one hand an archive uh, expressing that, um, uh, okay, you know, but there is a history uh, out here. Uh, on the other hand, um, it, it, it makes constant uh, references to uh, what is going on right now. Uh, because um, there is a lot going on in the field of uh, media activism. And as I said, you know, more and more, uh, this, uh, this becomes uh, now, in our, to our uh, context, uh, associated to the whole question of uh, organization and so uh, the, uh, the relation between uh, social media uh, on the internet and the question of organization. Okay. So, uh, there, is, uh, there is this website and uh, Eric tries to, um, uh, you know, archive uh, the most uh, you know uh, important examples. So the most recent one, as you can see here, are the Saudi cables, the, which we talked about in class um, uh, today um, uh, when we uh, uh, you know discussed uh, the the history of, of the tactics of um, uh, WikiLeaks um, and uh, and uh, you know the major websites uh, that um, facilitate. Whistleblowing and whistleblowing, facilitating uh, whistleblowing is now a very, very important uh, activity, right? Because it becomes more and more easy to leak uh, massive amounts of uh, of data out of, uh, you know, uh, big institutions, co companies, banks, uh, you name it, right? So, uh, so the facilitation facilitation of um, of whistleblowing material um, is is now. Uh, really um, uh, a very, very important uh, activity of uh, today's activism. Um, <clears throat> what I also want to just show, because in part uh, this is uh, a tactical um, uh, debate uh, amongst media activists themselves, but at the same time there is this um, uh, emphasis uh, on uh, the history on the history of, uh, you know, the, the, the last, uh, let's say, 20, uh, 20 years, 25 years, right? We have a history uh, and um, uh, we need to uh, somehow uh, write down this history, uh, reflect on it and learn from it, right? And this is very, very important for activists, although, you know, everybody is very, very much involved in the big issues uh, of today meaning debt, meaning global warming, etc. It's a long list of uh, urgent things uh, that, um, uh, that are out there. But uh, at the same time, we need to uh, discuss um, you know, our own uh, past. And um, uh, I want to, for the first time, maybe uh, in public, uh, discuss this document, uh, which is a uh, the first, let's say, comprehensive uh, anthology, which uh, MIT, MIT Press agreed uh, to bring out uh, in uh, in the next year, uh, and uh, at the moment, uh, this uh, this uh, um, anthology uh, is uh, is being produced. Uh, its main editors are uh, Eric Kleitenberg and uh, David Garcia. Eric uh, in Amsterdam, 
and uh, David uh, uh, in the UK. And here you can uh, see, I, I just want to go through it because you can see uh, kind of a similar mix uh, that we saw in the, in the Yes Man film too, right? Where our urgent issues of today and urgent tactics of today are kind of mixed with uh, um, uh, 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 attempts to reflect on, uh, on this history that, uh, that we've built up over the last 20 or 25 years. A history that uh, really has not been recorded uh, very, very well, even though you know, we're all media activists. Um, uh, yeah, the, um, um, the way uh, this is done. Um, so you can see here maybe some familiar names. There's a, there's a, a theory uh, section uh, of, uh, with uh, you know, the original piece, uh, for instance, in it by David and, and me, which we wrote in um, uh, early 1997. So that's kind of considered uh, the classical text uh, on, the, on the topic, the ABC of tactical media. Uh, then, uh, yeah, other issues on uh, tacto, tactical uh, cartographies, also an important um, kind of type of work that uh, we've been doing in, um, in Amsterdam. Uh, just mapping the power, mapping the issues, uh, uh, trying to visualize uh, what's going on. And, and as you've, we've seen, in fact, a lot of the, the, the Yes Men activities are, uh, are also uh, about that, right? Trying to map it, trying to visualize it. Um, uh, but then, uh, yeah, they do it maybe a bit more in a, in a performative way. Uh, and uh, we both work together closely with um, Patrick Lifty, uh, who is doing all the animations for the Yes Man. But um, yeah, we have also uh, uh, brought uh, out uh, the major writings of <coughs> Patrick Lifty uh, in, uh, in Amsterdam. So he's certainly an important uh, person um, in the background there. Well, the pro uh, protological uh, turn is kind of uh, you know, an element there in it of, uh, of software studies. Um, and then the, the critique uh, of, uh, of tactical media. Um, as it has been uh, ex ex expressed. And then the whole sections on aesthetics, of course, and the arts, because, uh, uh, you know, uh, tactical media, uh, in our uh, definition, has always been uh, about uh, the involvement of the arts, or driven by the arts, uh, performed by artists. Uh, so there is no separation uh, between, let's say, the activist uh, part and the um, uh, artistic uh, part. And uh, Brian Holmes uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, on board here. Uh, you can see uh, performance, uh, of course, is uh, uh, participation as being an important uh, uh, term there. Uh, and uh, publishing. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then uh, the question of organization is, of course, uh, you know, high on the agenda. And this is where... Uh, my work with uh, Ned Rossiter in Sydney uh, comes in where we um, uh, discuss our uh, approach of uh, organized networks. Uh, uh, just also look at um, the new forms of organization and decision making uh, that have come out of uh, Occupy. And there's, there's re we made a lot of progress uh, on that level there. Uh, but um, <coughs> Yeah, we, we are um, uh, proposing uh, this idea of organized networks. The Yes Men themselves are a prime example of an organized network, right? They don't have an office, but they are a very, very strong network of people who collaborate on these things uh, almost always, uh, you know, remotely, right? They come together, of course, when the performance has to take place, they suddenly show up somewhere, right? when we've seen numerous uh, examples in the film uh, of, of this process happening, right? Where uh, they are preparing, they're in different places, uh, they, they, they are 
they are uh, doing some kind of division of labor. Some of them are uh, preparing, you know, the uh, the animations. Others are preparing the costumes, and so on, and so on, and so on. And then, uh, as in a, a kind of a theater production, uh, uh, suddenly somewhere uh, in front of uh, an office uh, in Washington D.C. or wherever they are, uh, they um, uh, the organized network, so to say, materializes. Right. So that is the that is the theory, and, um, and th there's a lot of uh, kind of an, an experiments done with new forms uh, of, um, of organization. And of course, this is uh, now also uh, really becoming a big, big uh, debate, especially in Spain, uh, you know, about the relationship between the emerging political parties, in their case Podemos, uh, and the relation to the organized networks and the social movements, right? I mean, we don't have to um, kind of repeat um, uh, the post-1848 debates between Marx and Bakunin uh, once again, but, you know, there, there are, you know, big, big issues out there between those who believe that, uh, you know, this, the central political party... Uh, uh, have, now has to take over and has to somehow so synthesize uh, the issues, synthesize the energy uh, out on the street and really uh, deliver the political uh, change uh, on the level uh, of the traditional political party, uh, parliament, elections, etc. Right? And, uh, yeah, uh, this debate is not happening so much um, uh, in, uh, in Greece. Uh, the, the situation in Greece, I think, is maybe too, too serious. Uh, and um, so the situation between activists uh, and, and Syriza, yeah, is, uh, is tense, uh, but f at least holds uh, for, the, for the time being, as we speak, although last week uh, there were... Uh, activists uh, for the first time arrested on the streets of Athens. So um, maybe there is a change happening there, but we'll see. Uh, but this debate is suddenly uh, very, very strong and powerful and undecided uh, in, uh, in Spain. And Spain, as you know, is so much bigger uh, and so much more important than, uh, than Greece, right? Greece being a relatively small country. Uh, and uh, Spain being, uh, you know, the number three or number four uh, in Europe. And uh, so the political changes uh, and the political tensions and debates in Spain are very, very important. And uh, a lot of activists, let's say, in Italy or uh, France, but also, uh, you know, elsewhere in Europe are very, very closely monitoring what's going on. So the debates uh, that we are having here uh, how social movements, you know, are organized, the, the use of social media, uh, the way of, uh, you know, decentralized decision making, and so on and so on, in relation to uh, the political level, is is not an innocent uh, topic, right? Uh, as we move further into the crisis, uh, we're we're really talking about uh, something uh, something real uh, here, and there is a lot uh, at stake, as you know. And um, just to uh, wrap up, uh, you know, the, the, the film and, and my response to this, uh, the film uh, will certainly, uh, you know, play an important role also in the mobilization for Paris. Uh, Paris in December, uh, you know, put it in your agendas, it's going to be a very, very important moment. And uh, the, uh, the mobilizations for this uh, are already happening, they're well underway. Uh, and uh, this is going to be much, much bigger uh, than uh, Copenhagen, uh, because Copenhagen was, was still, uh, you know, there was some kind of a hope that something uh, would happen there in, inside this, uh, uh, you know, uh, conference room uh, with the delegations, etc. Right? Uh, in, the, in the situation uh, now, a couple of years later, uh, in, in Paris in December, uh, the situation is really, really different because a, a lot more people uh, see the urgency. Uh, the urgency that is expressed in this film, uh, but the urgency, uh, you know, I think goes now well beyond uh, the question, you know, can we influence what's going on uh, inside uh, a conference hall, yes or no. 
right? The, I think we've uh, with the climate um, uh, change, we've almost passed that. We've passed that point, and there is a lot of people who uh, are now convinced uh, that we have, in fact, already passed that point. So that has an influence also on on the on the forms of mobilization and on the forms of how the urgency will be expressed on the streets of Paris and, and beyond that uh, in the months of, of uh, December. So um, I want to leave it there and uh, let's, uh, let's discuss uh, further uh, issues uh, here.